Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. Yesterday I did a video showing how you can reference game objects from another game object and then call a method on it, showing four or five different ways that you can go about it, going from my least favorite to my favorite. And now I want to show you a couple ways that you can accomplish the same thing without even needing a reference to the object. We're going to go through two different ways that we can use events to pass messages along without actually, like I said, referencing anything at all. So we've got a scene set up here to use static events. We've got a bad guy spawner, which spawns bad guys into our scene. Right now they're just cubes and they just listen for a click. And then we've got a score manager that is just going to keep track of the score. So if I hit play and then switch this over to debug mode, you'll be able to see that whenever I click, the score goes up. And now if a second bad guy spawns, whenever I click, the score is going to go up by two. Let's give it just a second. And are we not spawning more? Oh, there we go. So now you see it's going up by two. So how is this all working? We have zero references in our bad guy. Our bad guy spawner doesn't know about the score manager either. So let's dive in and take a look. First, I'm just gonna open up the spawner. See here, we're just going through and spawning whatever this prefab is. There's zero reference to anything score related in here. Now let's take a look at the thing that it's spawning. So if we go to this prefab, you'll see that we're using this click to kill five script. Now in this script, you see we have a public static event that it takes an integer as a parameter named on any died. And then here we're just registering a default handler for it. So if nothing is listening, at least this is listening, then we don't have to do a null check. Once we have full C sharp 4.6 in every project, we won't really need that, but until then, I like this as a simple pattern instead of doing a check everywhere we're gonna call on any died. So what happens here? In our update, we check to see if we fired, basically checking if we left clicked, and then we call the on any died event and pass in the point value, which is just one. So let's search for references on this. This is Shift F12, by the way. And here you can see in this code, in the score manager with events, in awake, we just register for this method and then we call into score plus equals amount. Pretty simple. Now the nice thing here is that since this is a static event, we don't have to do it for every single enemy that spawns or bad guy that spawns. We just do it once and then they all have access to call into this static event. In fact, if we needed a reference to the object that died, we could even change this to be something like, instead of taking a click to an int, we could take a click to kill and then we could just pass in this. Of course, we wouldn't have that point value right there, but we could probably extract the point value from the object that was getting passed in. We do this a lot in pooling systems, at least I do in a lot of my pooling systems. I do semi-similar pattern to what I just showed you right there. Now, let me jump over to another way to do this. And that's with a publisher subscriber style model. Now, I've thrown together a really, really simple version of a pub sub system. There are some full versions of pub subsystems out there, some really good examples online. I don't wanna to dive too much into that today. I just wanna show that it is a possibility and it's something that you can do. So this one works a little bit differently. The score manager, let's just open it up. The score manager no longer knows about any event on any entity or on any entity type. So that click to kill five, which was our, just a bad guy that would kill, um, it doesn't need to know about that, doesn't have any static event that it's registering. Instead, what we do is we create a publisher system that allows us to register for different types of events and call something or do something when those events happen. In this case, we're registering for an add score event and then we're incrementing the score by the amount from the event. Now this is really loosely typed and like I said, pretty ugly and sloppy. I wouldn't use this as your sample for a pub sub system, but this is the most basic thing I could throw together. So again, the way it works, we call pubsub.registerListener and give it the action or method that we want it to call. And then we, here, let's just search for add score events. We just need to publish the event in something like this. So now whenever we click in on this guy, it just publishes an event and sets an amount. And our, our event right here, ultra simple, it's just an empty class with an integer in it. Ideally, we'd probably have an event base class or an event interface that we're passing around so that way we're not using object everywhere and things are a little bit cleaner, but this works. Now let me show you how that pub sub system looks too. 
Now if it looks confusing, don't worry. It's nothing really too complicated. It's just using a lot of generics and it's barely even using them well. So we've got a dictionary of type with a list of actions named listeners. So this is so that we can segregate out our listeners and our events by the type of the event. Like the add score event, that would be the first one that's getting published or registered for in here. So when we call register listener, we're actually registering for the type, which is type of T. And let's go look at that one more time. So here we're just registering with an add score event. So this is the type that'll get used. So we're check to see if the dictionary already contains that type, which on the first one through it doesn't. Then we just add in a new entry to the dictionary that's of that type for the key. So this is the key part. And then the value is just a list of actions. And then we just add our action that was passed in to that list of actions for that type. And then when we publish, we just simply check to see, you know, does this type have anything registered? If it doesn't, we just return, we can't do anything with it. There's no listener for it. We could optionally log something here, say, hey, no listener for this event type, maybe something's wrong. But if we do have a listener for it, or we at least have something registered and a list of actions in there, we loop through those actions and then invoke them one at a time passing in the event. So it's a pretty simple system. Like I said, this is the most basic pub sub system I could throw together really quickly. I highly recommend if you want to use this, look at some of the more advanced ones. Maybe I'll link some of those below later or just do a video on how to create a full pub sub system if people are really interested in it. Um, anyway, I just kind of want to wrap this up and say that while I love using events for passing messages around, there's still a time and place for each type of thing. Sometimes we need a reference to objects or a reference to a prefab or a scriptable object. Sometimes you want to be publishing events to a pub sub system like this. Other times you just want something even simpler like that other example where we just have a static event that just calls in and hey, whenever this thing dies, there's a thing that I want done and that's not really going to change. It doesn't need to be super flexible. I'm just going to code it like that. So don't get too stuck up on like a specific type of system or specific way to use it. But just remember that all of these are available. And when you're looking at your systems and your, your problems, just see which one of these solutions do you think what's going to fit best into your project? How much is it going to scale? How many people are writing different types of events? Look at all of that stuff before you make your decision. And if you make a decision and don't like it, you know, go back and refactor it, change it. It's not too hard to change these things out and it's definitely worth it. If anything gets to be kind of a pain in the ass, you know, kill it, start over or just kill it and replace it with a different method. Anyway, I hope this is helpful. Uh, as always, don't forget to thumbs up and share. It really does help get the word out and you know, it, it definitely makes me happy. Anyway, thanks again. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.